welcome to the Wednesday night service of the Ambassador Baptist Church. We are delighted to have you with us this evening. We're going to be continuing our study in the book of Revelation. Uh, we've been studying chapter 13 for the last several weeks. I was going to move on to chapter 14, but I decided that we need to go back and focus on something that is in the last part of chapter 13, verses 16 through 18, because uh, in the world we live in today and the way things are going, I believe it's very important that we uh, focus on this subject because there are a lot of false prophets out there uh, leading people astray, preaching untruth, uh, but we're going to study it and look at it according to the scriptures. Um, we know that God has a trinity. Uh, we call it God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, they are all three, yet they are all one God. Uh, we know from our studies the last few weeks that the devil is a great imitator. Uh, he imitates God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And during the tribulation time, that will not change. Uh, he also has a trinity, uh, but we call it an unholy trinity. Uh, Satan or anti-God we looked at in Revelation chapter 12 verse 3 and 4 it said and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now we know from our studies uh, in chapter 13 and 12 that the woman represents Israel, that the child represents the Lord Jesus Christ. We also know from chapter 12, verse 9, uh, this great red dragon that appears. Verse 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So we know that this great red dragon is the old serpent. If you remember, the serpent was in the garden with Adam and Eve and caused the world uh, problems that we have today when Eve gave in and ate of the forbidden fruit. It says he's called the devil and Satan. And so uh, we know that this Satan represents in the unholy trinity anti-God. Now is the devil alive today? Absolutely. Uh, 1 Peter 5 8 says to be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, uh, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And if you try to live for the Lord today, you can be assured uh, that the devil is going to do everything he can to cause you to stumble and to fall. But not only that, but the second uh, person in the unholy trinity is the Antichrist. Uh, we saw him at the beginning of chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. John said, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. <clears throat> and the beast which I saw was like unto a leper, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And listen to this. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And so this Antichrist receives his power, uh, from the uh, devil, from Satan, the anti-God. Uh, if you remember in the Trinity, Jesus always looked to and pointed to the Father uh, and gave him the honor and the glory and received his power uh, from the Father. Uh, so is the Antichrist alive today? Uh, maybe he is, but maybe he's not. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 9 says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, or the Antichrist, uh, who opposeth 
and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember now, he is the great imitator. Verse 5, remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. And now ye know uh, what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. And so he hasn't been revealed yet. Why? Verse 7, for the, <clears throat> the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only who, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Uh, the one who has to be taken out of the way is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit of God lives inside of you and I. And so until the rapture takes place and we, the church, are taken out and the Holy Spirit taken out of the way, the Antichrist is not going to be revealed. Verse 8 says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And so Satan is the one, the devil, that gives the Antichrist all his power and his signs and his wonders. But he cannot be revealed until the Holy Spirit and the church are taken out, uh, which will be the rapture, which we looked at back in chapter 4 and verse number 1. Then last week we looked at the false prophet or the anti-spirit, uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 through 14. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had uh, the wound by a sword and did live. And so this anti-spirit uh, will cause people to worship the beast. Uh, this supporting agent will control the minds and the wills of uh, people by three major methods. Number one, by deceiving wonders. Uh, you notice in verse 14 it says, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. Uh, he is going to be able to do mighty miracles and deceiving wonders. And the devil has the power to do miracles as well. And so we find out in Revelation 16, 14, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them together, uh, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. And so today we need to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and not in so-called miracles. Secondly, he will do it by enforcing worship. Uh, in verses 14 and 15, it says that he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. It says that they uh, should make an image to the beast. Uh, verse 15 says, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And so everyone is going to be forced to worship uh, the Antichrist and uh, the false prophet is going to deceive them and he's going to be given power and these miracles uh, that he does are going to cause people to want to worship uh, the beast. And then thirdly, and what we're kind of focusing on tonight, and that is the fact that he will control wealth. Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 18. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now it says in verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man. 
His number is, th is 600, 3 score, and 6. And that is equivalent to 666. And so this false prophet who causes people to worship the beast will control the commerce and the wealth of the world. Now those who go through the great tribulation will be branded by the beast. And so the only way in those days to buy groceries, uh, to purchase medicine, to make your house payments, to buy gasoline or anything else will be to show the mark. Now we are moving even today toward uh, a regimen uh, of people by computer. Uh, this regimentation by the mark of the beast uh, will seem reasonable and efficient. Uh, and so today the world is heading toward and working toward a one world government, a one world uh, religion, a cashless society, a time where the uh, false prophet will cause people to receive this mark or you'll not be able to to buy or sell. And so we notice, first of all, that it is an identification mark. Uh, it identifies. Verse 16 says, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. You notice it says that he causeth all. That means anybody, rich, poor, free, bond, uh, everyone will have to receive this mark. And so everybody will be on the same ground. Uh, we will all be equal, those that are here during the tribulation. I won't be here. I will be in heaven. But those who go through the tribulation, whether you're rich, you're poor, you're great, you're small, uh, you will have to receive the remark. Now, uh, it'll either be in your right hand or in your forehead. Now, there have been a lot of uh, speculations, a lot of things today about the mark of the beast and what it might be, uh, who it might be. There are so many uh, different ideas and thoughts out there today. Uh, there are many that believe that it's going to be uh, this kind of barcode uh, that is tattooed into our skin. You go to the store today, uh, even on your phones, uh, and there's barcodes that you scan and it brings up the prices and you can put all this information into those barcodes. Uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, there was mulch that was on sale. And so I went over to the big piles of mulch and I took my phone and I scanned that barcode with a picture. And when I got in line, I pulled that picture up and the girl at the counter was able to take her little a handheld device and scan that bar. She knew exactly what the mulch was. She knew exactly how much it cost. And so I was able to buy that because she was able to uh, scan it and to get the price. Uh, there may be tattoos that will be lasered uh, on our uh, right hand or maybe the forehead, uh, which will show up uh, so that it, it may be in an ultraviolet light. I know sometimes when you go into places like Chuck E. Cheese with your kids or whatever, or uh, amusement parks in different places, sometimes uh, I've been told bars, I don't know personally, but when you leave the place, sometimes they'll stamp your hand uh, when you go out because you're going to come back. Uh, you can't see that stamp, but when you come back and you put it under an ultraviolet lamp, all of a sudden that stamp or that mark shows up to let them know that you have paid, you have come in, you left, and now uh, you want to come back. Uh, the big talk today is that scientists have developed little microchips that are about the size of a grain of rice. Uh, they can be implanted perhaps in, the, in your hand or perhaps in your forehead. Uh, we already know that technology is being used on pets. Uh, there are pets that get lost and they can scan and find that chip and it's got all the pets information, the owner's information. Uh, today they're uh, talking and trying to work out a way to put microchips into newborns so that it can prevent kidnappings or even in the event uh, many times uh, mistakes are made at the hospital and the wrong child with the wrong parents. Uh, so they're working on that. There are uh, places today that people have uh, have that chip already in place in companies uh, to get into your business. There's places where you can go uh, and scan that and it'll bring up your banking information. Uh, for instance, in a bar, you can buy drinks or what have you and scan that. It'll automatically deduct that uh, from your account. And so uh, it's possible that that technology uh, could be used in this day. 
uh, to fulfill the mark of the beast. Uh, really, we don't know exactly what it's going to be. Today, there are police cars and traffic lights. They have uh, license plate scanners. Uh, they're building a database so that they can track you, track where you drive. Uh, they can run your plate and bring up and show if you have warrants or citations. And so they're able to scan you and that's all put into a database. And so technology today uh, has advanced in identifying people. You go to the store, you go to the bank, they have that little ink pad. You put your thumb in there and you uh, can be identified with fingerprints. There are businesses and places today where, um, and even devices where you, you can be identified with your retina. Uh, computers, uh, you can get on your computer. There are a lot of cell phones today that have fingerprint or eye retina recognition so that you can lock your phone or you can open your phone uh, by using that technology. And so uh, there are many things today uh, that are, are, are on the scene that could be put into place that the Antichrist uh, could use. Uh, when this pandemic hit that we are in now, testing began and when it started out, uh, you would get the test results in 10 to 14 days. Uh, now there's places today that you can get instant results, they say. Um, there's a rumor then that one day when the vaccine is developed that it's going to be mandatory for you to get the vaccine or to get the shot. Uh, kind of a total government takeover or a control. And so in the day when the Antichrist is on the scene, uh, he's going to get you to receive that mark pretty much the same way. What it will be, nobody really knows. Uh, we have DNA technology today uh, where you can test people and know if they're related. Maybe the devil will use that. No one is really certain, but we know that in the day that we live in, the resources are available uh, so that that can take place. Today, uh, they are pushing for a cashless society. Uh, the other day when we went into Bucky's, uh, I purchased something and it cost I don't know, $3.45, and the uh, cashier said, uh, do you have the correct change or any coins? Because there's a coin shortage. And I said, uh, no, ma'am, I don't. She said, would you be willing uh, to use your credit card? I said, no, ma'am, I have cash. She said, well, we will drop the $0.45 cents and just round it to the $3. Listen, folks, there is no coin shortage in America. Now, there is a circulation shortage. Uh, back in 2019, there were 3.82 billion coins in circulation. The first three months of 2020, there were 3.2 billion coins uh, made and put into circulation. And so there's not a coin shortage. There is a circulation shortage. But businesses are asking you to please use your credit cards because of the coin shortage. Now, why is that? because society is pushing for a cashless society, uh, which will one day lead to uh, not needing any cash, not needing any money, which when, then will in turn learn to lean to or go toward the mark of the beast in order to buy and to sell. And so you think about it today, uh, plastic currency uh, is uh, being used quickly in replace of cash. Uh, it's becoming more and more popular as the standard uh, transaction uh, usage. It's been suggested that perhaps even the mark of the beast will actually be some kind of a credit card system. Uh, and really, if you think about it, it's already being used in many cases today. Uh, food stamps are being used by credit cards. Uh, government services are being used uh, credit card wise. I know when the uh, stimulus thing was mailed out. Many people were mailed uh, and given credit cards with their stimulus money on it. Uh, and so whether we like it or not, we're headed toward this cashless society. But that kind of makes sense uh, because with a cashless society, uh, crooks are going to be harder uh, to get along because of uh, robberies. Drug dealers will have a more different, difficult time. Uh, there are a lot of people will be uh, less likely to be able to hide uh, from the IRS and what they've made and, and their tax returns and then when they file. Uh, we're moving and have been moving in that direction. So it's just a matter of time. 
Uh, but whether we like it or not, we are all kind of reduced to numbers. You notice it said that it is the number of a man. Uh, today, everywhere we go, everybody has a social security number or a driver's license number. And when you cash a check, they want to see your driver's license so they can have that number. Uh, in many places around the world, like Sweden and Israel, uh, everyone has a number. Uh, computers, they like numbers uh, rather than they do our names. And so uh, whatever it is that the Antichrist is going to use, the stage is being set now. Uh, people, you know, the government completely shut things down with the, the uh, pandemic. And, and people were told to stay in their homes and they couldn't do this and they couldn't do that. The Antichrist is going to set up that same system. And so this pandemic could kind of be a, uh, a pre-example uh, of what it's going to be like and how that the government will have control. And so, uh, you know, we just need to be ready. Now, Christian, you won't be here. We'll be caught out before that takes place. But let me encourage you today, if you're not saved, to get saved as soon as possible, to get saved immediately. Because if you go into the tribulation, you'll not have an opportunity again to get saved. You'll have to receive this mark. You'll have to worship uh, this beast. Or you, as the verse says, uh, you will be put to death. And so while we can't know for sure what the mark of the beast is, uh, we are learning a lot about it today and it's going to be used. And so that leads us to the second thing, and that is that it will be a an isolation mark. Verse 17 says, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of the beast. And so we're going to find out that this this mark is going to be tied to the economy, and it's going to isolate some folks. Uh, people are going to be required to produce this in order to buy or sell, it says. And so uh, it's going to be a, an isolation for those that don't have it. Uh, now, uh, this in itself uh, is a great enticement for people to receive the mark of the beast. Uh, for instance, today. Uh, people are being told that in order to conquer this pandemic, the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, when the, um, the antidote or the vaccine is made, you're going to be required to take it so that we can save everybody. Well, a lot of people are going to fall for that and they're going to run and get that vaccination. Uh, and so it's kind of setting up uh, like it will be in the days of the Antichrist in the days of the tribulation, you know, in order to have a job, in order to get credit, in order to go uh, do any kind of banking business, uh, even little things like buying a loaf of bread or selling something, uh, you're going to be required to have this mark. Uh, can you imagine uh, driving through during the tribulation through McDonald's to get your kids a Happy Meal? And you don't have a mark to scan, and so no Happy Meals for the kids, and so they go hungry. Can you imagine a mother with a newborn baby needing diapers and baby food, and she doesn't have the mark, and so she's not allowed to purchase those products? Imagine going on vacation. You're driving down the highway. You, you pull off, and you need gas to continue with your vacation. You don't have the mark. You can't get any gasoline. A lot of families will probably be uh, in the dark because they have no electricity because uh, without the mark, they're not able to purchase uh, their utilities for water and, and for electric and uh, for gas to warm their houses. And so this mark is going to instantly divide the world from those who have received the mark and worship the beast to those who are going to be saved during the tribulation who refuse to accept the mark and who refuse to bow down and worship the Antichrist. And so it's going to be a mark of isolation. Uh, it's going to isolate people in the world. And so now the, the, the Antichrist is going to use this mark to have total control of the world. And so everything in the world during the tribulation is going to be underneath his control. All our food, uh, your housing, your utilities, medical care, medical bills, uh, medicine that you're going to need. All of that's only going to be accomplished by the mark of the beast. And so he's going to have power over everyone in the world. 
Now, there will be those during the tribulation that will not accept the mark. Uh, they will refuse the mark. There are going to be, if you remember early in our studies, the 144,000 Jewish evangelists who uh, have received and have been marked and, and received uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so they'll not receive the mark. There's going to be all those uh, who are going to be saved during the uh, tribulation because of the 144,000 evangelists and the two witnesses. Those folks are not going to receive that mark. And so they'll not be able to buy and sell, and they'll be in the dark, and the, uh, the Antichrist will do his best uh, to destroy those folks. But uh, there will literally be millions of people that will refuse to bow down to the beast or to his image. Now, uh, they will reject uh, the ministry of the false prophet. Now, these folks are going to suffer persecution. Uh, they're going to suffer greatly. Uh, those, they'll, they'll not be able to buy food or clothing or medicine. Uh, they'll have to refuse and be refused of medical treatment. And so no doubt many of them will starve to death in order that they might not dishonor the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, many of them will be hunted down and persecuted. Many of them will be put to death uh, because of their defiance of the beast and the false prophet. And so they will pay a terrible price for their faith in Jesus Christ. But in the end, uh, they will be rewarded greatly when they leave this world. Now, you and I today, uh, we suffer persecution, but not like they're going to suffer uh, during the tribulation. And so despite the little bit of persecution that you and I suffer today, uh, we need to be faithful to serve the Lord Jesus Christ until death if necessary. And then thirdly, I want you to notice that it is an information mark. Uh, in verses 17 and 18, again, it says, And that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Herein is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. And so we're told that this mark is tied to a number, that this number uh, is tied to the name of the beast. And that will lead uh, and has led to speculation over the years. People, I don't know how many times I've read and seen and heard uh, the different uh, possibilities, the different theories that people have put out there as to who the Antichrist might be. Uh, they've taken the alphabet, they've taken the letters, they've taken the numerical values, they've put them together, added them all up, uh, trying to find out uh, who the Antichrist is. Uh, there have been over the years, people have said it was uh, Adolf Hitler, it was Napoleon. Some thought it was Ronald Reagan or Bill Clinton uh, or George Bush because they manipulated the numbers and added them up, uh, trying to come up with 666. Uh, there are many that believe back in the 80s that Gorbachev was the Antichrist because of that huge birthmark that he had on his head. But the fact is, we don't know who the Antichrist is. Now, we can do all the numerical figures and all the uh, adding of this, adding of that, but we are still really left in the dark on who the Antichrist really is. But here's the thing. When he appears, the people living in that day will have all the information they need to be able to identify the Antichrist because uh, the false prophet is going to point to him, make an image of him, and, and, and demand that people bow down and worship him and that they receive the mark. So we know from the scriptures that it is the number of a man. We know that it is 666. Now, six in the Bible is the number of man. Man was created on the sixth day. Uh, the number is, is six, just falls short of the number seven. The number seven is the number of completion. The number seven uh, is seen several times in the Bible as well as the number six. Uh, but uh, the number six falls short of the number seven, which is perfection. Now, the Antichrist uh, will be the pinnacle of human achievement. He's going to be the brightest, the smartest, most powerful uh, man in the world has ever seen outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he's going to be remarkable. He's going to be powerful. Uh, people are going to uh, bow down to him. They're going to worship him. They're going to look at him as God. But 
he will fall short of perfection. Uh, he, is, he is not God. And so man is represented by the number. Uh, God is rep uh, six. God is represented by the number seven. And so Satan and his unholy trinity will never be complete and will never be God. Uh, so he is, uh, number is 666. Uh, God, you could say, is 777. And so there are going to be terrible days that are going to be coming uh, to this earth. Today, uh, we see terrible days. Uh, we see things going on in the world today that we never dreamed we would see. Uh, but those things are mild compared to what Satan is going to do uh, when he has free reign down here on this earth. And billions of people are going to be uh, brought underneath his power, underneath his grip. And he is going to uh, make them, force them to receive his mark and to bow down and worship him. Now, the sad thing about that is, is that all those uh, who receive that mark uh, are destined for eternity. In Revelation 14, 9 through 12, it says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in their forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wrath, uh, excuse me, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And so uh, they cannot take the mark of the beast, uh, worship Satan, and then be saved. It's not going to happen. If they bow down, if they worship the beast, if they accept that mark, they are lost forever. They will spend an eternity in the lake of fire. That's just the terrible truth of the word of God. If you're watching this today, uh, don't let this happen to you. If you're not saved and you're listening to this video, please come to the Lord Jesus Christ while there is still time to be saved. If you get left behind after the rapture, you might survive the wars, you might survive the famines and the death and the diseases, but you will take the mark of the beast and you will go to hell. If you do not have, uh, but you don't have to do that. Uh, today you can trust Christ as your savior. Uh, Satan, to, you, to, to him, you're just a number. Uh, but if you will come to God, if you will call on God today and repent of your sins and ask him to forgive you of your sins, uh, he will save you. Come into your life and save you when you call on him, when you believe uh, with your heart and when you confess with your mouth and invite him into your life. He will save you and he will give you a new name and he will write that name in the Lamb's Book of Life. You will become a new creature. All those old things will pass away and be, things will become new and you will be in him. Then when the trump of God sounds and we're taken out, you will go out to be with us in heaven as well. Now we are living in a time uh, where a lot of people to take today will take offense. Uh, they will get even mad and angry and irate when you tell them that there is only one way to heaven, and that way is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the Bible says in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. And so Jesus Christ today is the only way to heaven. You can't get there by your good works. You can't get there by being baptized. You can't get there uh, by church membership. And so today, Jesus Christ is the only one and the only way. Uh, today, a lot of people uh, put their trust in, in everything under the sun, but the one who came and died for their sins. And so one day, everyone will come to uh, the tribulation that is not saved. There'll be a one world church. There'll be a one world government. 
there'll be a one world system run by the devil, anti-God, the anti-Christ, anti-Christ, and the false prophet, the anti-spirit. And so we have a choice today. You can worship the beast during the tribulation, or you can accept the Lamb of God today and worship him today. I believe the rapture is near. I believe that the rapture could take place at any moment. Everything is in place today for the Lord Jesus Christ to come back. And so, do you know Jesus personally? Do you know him as your Savior? If you do, and your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, uh, you'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and taken out of here before the tribulation begins. But if not, you can pray today and trust him as your Savior. Ask him to come into your life and save you before it's eternally too late. I encourage you, I beg you, to call upon Jesus today to repent and turn from your sins and to turn to Jesus. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and to come in your life and save you and then acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the only way uh, that you can avoid the tribulation should the Lord come back while you are living. If you were to die today, uh, you would be like the rich man in Luke chapter 16, who when he died in hell, lifted up his eyes, being in torment. If you die today without Christ, before the rapture takes place, you will die and go to hell. And then one day hell will empty itself, and all those in hell will stand at the great white throne judgment. They will be judged for their sins, and then they will be cast into the lake of fire, where the false prophet and the beast and the devil one day will be cast and they will be suffer torment forever and ever and ever. <clears throat> so I encourage you today to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful and thankful for your word today. And Lord, I know those of us today that are saved, we will be caught out of this world and we will be in heaven during this seven-year tribulation. And we'll not have to worry about all these things that will be going on during this time on earth. But Father, today I know there are many who have never trusted you as their Savior. I know there are many who will be alive during this tribulation, who will go through all these things uh, that we have discussed. Uh, and Father, I pray today that someone is watching this message and that someone will fall on their face before you and call upon you and repent of their sins and trust you as their Savior so that they'll not have to go through this terrible time. And we'll be careful to give you all the honor and glory for it uh, because we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, God bless you and thank you for being with us this evening. We will be in-house on Sunday morning at 1045, worshiping together the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, our building has been cleaned and sanitized every week. Uh, we have face masks and hand sanitizers. Our chairs are distanced at six foot apart uh, from family to family so that we can do everything we possibly can uh, to prevent COVID-19 and the spread of disease. But we also are going to do what God has called us to do, and that's to come together and to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. So we hope that you can be there with us this coming Sunday. And then Sunday evening, again, we will be live streaming uh, on the, our Facebook page as well as YouTube. And we hope that if you can't uh, go to a service of your own, that perhaps you'll come and join us in our live stream services. May God richly bless you and have a great week.